cases, for some, it is a journey to find one's mode of expression. For some, it is a craft, carefully honed over years, while for others it's an elaborate discovery. We study art as a juxtaposition of lines, shapes, forms, and colors. We see art framed on walls for posterity. We also see art in walls that frame our everyday lives. It is my pleasure to introduce our esteemed panelists who will be sharing their thoughts today on the topic, Walls of Change. Today we have with us Mr. Nicola Fasilo, Director, Alliance Francais du Bengal. Good evening, sir. And on the panel, we, we have, I will start from my extreme right, Mr. Ornok Samadar, artist, illustrator, and Megha, could you please honor and felicitate our esteemed panel, panelist, Mr. Ornok Samadar. We have Mr. Hire Mitro, visual artist, very senior artist known in the city. Very much. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. And this is our little token of appreciation. We have Ms. Swamita Guma. She's an interior designer par excellence, and she's the founder of Phyllis one of the most premium interior designing firms in the city. It's Ms. Muna. We have Mr. Shudit Todong, founder and artistic director of Culture Monks, a man who wears many hats. Mr. Todong. And finally, the man of the moment, Skio, who has been with us on the campus for the last two days, making it more colorful for us. Thank you so much, Skio. And finally, we have Dr. Krishnetha Sharkar, educationist and director at NSHM Life Skills. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar, for being with us So I will hand the mic over to Mr. Shudit Tadon to take this beautiful and interesting uh, dialogue forward on the topic of walls of change. And students, I just want to remind you, please keep your phones on silent and we will have a wonderful discussion ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. Uh, it is a great pleasure and an honor for me to be uh, moderating this panel. And I welcome all the panelists to uh, this discussion on the theme of all the change. I also welcome all the students of NSHM and the journalists and uh, uh, a general audiences who have come in to uh, see this panel uh, or listen to this discussion. Uh, a warm thanks to Nicola, uh, the director of Alliance Proces de Bengal, who has made it possible for this, uh, for the Bujur India Festival, the fourth edition of Bujur India Festival, and uh, uh, an intervention in the course of the Bujur India Festival is this Wall Art Festival, uh, which has been uh, uh, the art. Uh, we have the artist, uh, uh, the graffiti artist Kio from France. And it is due to the generous uh, support of the French Institute and the Alios Rossi, which is, is possible. I also thank NSHM for all the support and the wonderful students who have been part of this uh, project so far. So, yes, the theme that uh, we are approaching today is walls of change. And uh, walls, because uh, that is fundamental, that, that is the canvas on which uh, we are walking, uh, working on. Uh, we have worked on in the course of this project. 
and walls uh, can be metaphorical or could be the physical walls. And change is something that has to do with uh, changing the uh, orthodox uh, past or the past that we are in and uh, uh, imagining a future or creating a new future. So uh, any wall uh, has this possibility of change, of uh, being something else than what it was previously. And that is exactly what SCIO has done uh, on the walls of NSHM, which was a uh, wall which is now looking very different and the space is uh, enlivened and it's giving a different, uh, uh, it's, it's creating a little bit different psychological impact on everybody. And uh, hence, uh, there is no doubt that art has this immense uh, potential of creating this change. And uh, uh, we have realized this project through a process of dialogue and co-creation, the online forums which we had leading up to the actual uh, uh, implementation of the projects uh, where the students of NSHM have participated and uh, uh, has uh, and the dialogue uh, led to this co-creation where the students have been part of this uh, process. It's the coming together of two civilizations and uh, French artists, French intellectual thoughts have been so important for the art movement in Calcutta and it will continue to be so, uh, so because of these uh, continued interventions uh, that happen from time to time. So I uh, would now uh, request Kyo to say a few things about this project itself, about uh, his journey, and uh, particularly this uh, 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 this moment where he is in India and visiting several cities and participating in this Indo-France uh, cultural exchange uh, festival. So I'll, I'll hand over the microphone to Kyo and request him to share his thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, he hello everybody. So, you will see my English is not very good. So, I'll try to speak slowly. And uh, if you don't understand, I have my man here and he's here to help me. So, I'm very happy to be here. It's uh, part of a big trip in India. So, it's the uh, first city here. Uh, we begin with Mumbai, after Pondicherry, after here, uh, and uh, we will go to uh, Dehradun and Noida, and after we come back to Paris. So I'm very happy because uh, here in India we can meet some young people uh, and some creative people and share with them uh, the culture and my culture so the graffiti on the wall, the wall art, and now for me just an art, uh, a really disciplined, uh, good art. And we speak about uh, walls and um, how can walls change the world. Uh, me, uh, I'm born in uh, I'm born in big city in the south of France, and now I live in Paris and. The most thing I look is walls. Uh, you go outside, you look at walls. Walls, but walls are not the frontier for me. Uh, it's a support of creativity. So we can push on walls. Uh, the, the expression of uh, the, uh, himself, uh, yourself, myself, everybody's self. <laughs> So, um, um, all my life, I want to express to the public, to the people, what I think, uh, who I am on the city. So, this is why I paint on the wall, because this is the, the um, uh, easier way to show uh, at all the people what I think, what, what my uh, mind is, my sensibility. So, this is why I do graffiti. Uh, on the wall, and because it's a uh, more easier thing for me to express, uh, I, I don't sing, I don't dance, I don't do dance. So you, I know you <laughs> are very, very best in dancing in all the art I can do. But uh, graffiti is like a challenge for me. I began in wall; it was uh, uh, forbidden, but it was a way to express and have an identity in the uh, in the city. 
So now I continue on my life to express my identity on the world. So now if I can speak about my style. Um, you have also uh, look at my walls, yeah, with my amazing team. Uh, so this is, yeah, you can applaud because in two days we have done a very big walls. Uh, well, it's very, uh, I, I think myself I have to do in three or four days, but in two days it's very perfect. They are very focused, very creative, very happy. Uh, with a smile and uh, it's very hot here. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, you are very amazing. Thank you. So my um, expression now, my style is a um, uh, mix uh, between um, geom geometric abstraction and half of a face in realistic uh, style, figurative style, and it's about, um, you know, in the big city we have a lot of new modern architecture, which is very uh, geometric, so you have the square, the circle, and uh, you can uh, have on my uh, creation all this type of geometry. But in the modern uh, um, architecture, the modern urban, urban uh, city, uh, there's a lot of people live into this uh, new architecture, but they don't know each other. So this is why I try to insert figurative, so human, in this architecture. Uh, the architecture is very, you know, geometric, very uh, mm. cold, uh, um, cold geometry. Yeah. Symmetry. But you are, we are not like this, we are organic. So how to live in an architecture very geometric, very symmetric, uh, with uh, us all like organic. So this is why I try to make this paradox uh, creative and, to, and this is inspired by creativity now. So that's all. Uh, and you have some inspiration by Bauhaus uh, design, um, modernism design, uh, neo modernism. So you can see all of the inspiration in uh, all of my new style of uh, creativity. So now, what is the next step? <laughs> So, uh, thank you, Skio. Uh, yes, public art uh, and this uh, wall painting as a form of public art has always been a, 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 a form which is open to the common. People who generally do not know art as it exists in the gallery, who don't know the codes, who don't know what. It, so, for them, it is it makes art accessible. And this common is always a space of great, great criticality, where there is a lot of critical discussion, like what we used to call or who call art art. Arta is a place of disagreement. We agree to disagree. And we also find ways of reconciling our differences. So this space of Arta is uh, fading away. And uh, it's uh, replaced by what an architect has called the rational city. That we are, uh, there's a great space of rationality. And uh, this irrational time is no longer available to us. So I will now pass on the microphone to Dion Victor who has great experience in uh, this form of uh, uh, critical discourse in art. And he has seen and traveled all over the world and his uh, artworks have been, uh, he's worked with artists uh, uh, through many years and uh, he's seen art movements, revolutions, everything. So we'd like to hear from him uh, of his experiences of walls and how it changes and the criticalities of art and art in general. Hello. Good evening, yes, sir. So, uh, this is a very uh, interesting and uh, what should I say, it's a uh, provocative kind of issues, uh, which I am uh, with it for the last 50 years or so, maybe 60 years. So, that is a, a huge uh, journey, and uh, there are a lot of contradictions, a lot of 
uh, discourses, a lot of disagreements uh, all over the world. We, because we actually, we uh, specifically, is a product of uh, British uh, academic school. There is a school called Government College of Art and Craft, which was previously a school and converted to college. And it, it was founded in 1864. So you can see that the British colonial uh, agenda was to make the certain kind of colonial hang ups, colonial intervention, or colonial influences, and colonial uh, philosophy to be imposed on us in this. Uh, uh, our, at that time in 19th century, uh, Bengal Renaissance was coming up. There was a lot of things was changing in literature. Logan was there in 1861. Uh, Rohinath was born in 1861. So these are things 1864 or new. Uh, 19th century was a very important time for Indian uh, cultural context. So who is the sad part of the story? So we are the product of the bad culture. And I was always against it from the day one because my initial guru uh, was a potua. I don't know whether you have not this term, potua. Potua means a, who makes the pot, pot means the surface. This uh, the art surface is, there are a lot of practices in uh, pot painting, especially in India. Uh, there are a lot of schools. Uh, those are small painters, those are square um, part paintings in Rajasthan and all those things. So the, the Potuas, they are the, actually the people came from the, the actual uh, what we call it Saturn for Borbo view. That is that the, they are the actual spirit, they are, the, they are carrying the Message. They are carrying the actual philosophy of um, visual art, visual expressions. Maybe there are religious themes, there are also social themes, but the practices were interesting. In various uh, uh, terms, one is the form, that's the, the, the design, the uh, art, architectural and these uh, figurative forms they used to practice. Then the materials brasses. They used to make their own brasses. Those are not imported from the Europe. So that is the interesting part. The character of those brasses is very, very important. And the paint materials, the pigments, they, they are making it uh, out of out of indigenous kind of uh, paints they are used to. Have. So those are lost. Those is forgotten uh, story. Even the I'm coming to the point of this wall painting. Nowadays in, in West Bengal, there's a practice called uh, enhancing the atmosphere of the villages. And there, there are places called Kwabda, like that. So those are uh, synthetic, uh, interrupted, and bad uh, culture being imported from the city. Story is like that. The city artist from this uh, kind of institute, this kind of uh, practices, they are going to these villages like a tourist. I have been in uh, villages for um, for leisure for three four days or something like that. So and they are projecting. They are say for instance. There is one place in uh, West Bengal, in Jharigram uh, or something like that, the place, I don't know the name of the village, that they have painted optical art. Entire village has been flooded with optical art. So, what does it mean by this optical art being imported to a remote village in West Bengal? That is an interesting thing. Another thing is this, all this, especially in India, in this subcontinent, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, we have, we had, we have also, these folk artists who were 
uh, tribal artists who are practicing on the wall painting, like Odomoni painting was, was wall paintings, like that. So that is being rejected. That is being, uh, you can say, it is mummified or being, being uh, like if, uh, old practices, real, rural practices, native practices, they are called native practices. These terms are not created by us. Uh, so these are colonial terms, like na native practices. Even in uh, Kolkata itself, there is a Goranhata. Uh, Goranhata uh, is famous for its wood, wood craft, wood uh, engraving, and litho uh, 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 reproductions. So those are also very traditional, and those are also called native art. There was one, at the 19th century, there was a school came up, like company school. I don't know whether you have uh, seen those oh, what, company school. So this company school is uh, uh, it, uh, it has been influenced by a team, is Indian team. Indian birds and Indian figures and Indian activities, Indian rural people, those are painted in a European style. Like uh, and you have must be seen the Ruby Barman's work. Ruby Barman was medium uh, was oil and human figures was like a Western uh, structure, Western anatomy. Uh, but clothes and other things, ornaments are typically Indians, typically from this uh, uh, old uh, Mahabharata or Ramayana stories. So these are things, these are hybrid kind of things, these are fusion was going on for centuries in uh, in this part of subcontinent. So it, again these wall paintings, now in Kolkata uh, for last few years, the wall painting, wall painting movement has come up and very badly executed uh, and it is being uh, politicized. Politicized not mean not mean that uh, we have a political graffiti for a long time. We have a history of political graffiti in Kolkata, in West Bengal for a long time, for the last 50, 50 years after the independence. From this uh, the left movement, left movement was going on in the 60s. And we have political graffiti, political cartoons uh, in, in walls, uh, in the localities and all that. But uh, these political issues I am talking about, it's a, it's a coterie, it's a subtle. It, I know X, so X will be uh, given this chance to do it. Whatever the uh, abilities or skill he has or she has, that is not important. The important thing is I have the, 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 the connections. These connections build this in West Bengal, in Kolkata, is a dominating factor. These are these being politi politicized like that. It's a politician like that, that you know, uh, we are green, uh, you are red, you are Garua, or you, you are something uh, like that. Say, for instance, I used to paint in black and white. So people ask me, why you are using black and white, black and white, uh, where is the color? I'm saying all the colors being robbed by these political parties. Uh, Tino has taken the green, the CPM has taken the red, and BJP has taken the yellow as a, the orange. So what do we what do we be doing it? We have lost this thing that is left in black, nothing else. So this is the politics of the art. It's dominating in in West Bengal in Kolkata. It's a bad culture, it's a, it's a stinking culture is going on. And even these walls are stinking. You can't see that. You have to you can't you have to become blind for these things. So this, the motif or the motion or the uh, our motion is to enhance the situation, enhance the public art, the communicate with the public. But what should be the language of the communication? The language is thinking language. It's a bad culture. It's a, it's a, uh, you can see the, all those fabric, uh, fiberglass uh, dolls all around the corner. All the dolls are uh, dancing. On, by the state, by this, uh, you can see this, uh, what is called the bypass. If you go to the bypass, you can see all those. We have to give time uh, restrictions. We have to, 
Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, I, I, I'm picking it. Okay. This is the things. This is the point. I, uh, point to be noted. And when we are discussing good things, very uh, positive things, that we, we have to keep in mind there are negative things also. Thank you very much. So uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting polemics on the state of affairs today and the uh, robbing of the colors for the artist is uh, quite evident. So I think that I'll just quote an architect called Peter Lang. He says that we have gone from fearing the death of the city to fearing the city of death. And I think it is a very traumatic change. So uh, we may be heading towards this rationale uh, city of death uh, gradually, uh, not of life, which Steo is trying to uh, bring out that organicity, the life in the city through the flesh and the woman. Here is what we are. Uh, this, uh, this we are uh, upholding this uh, concept of equality. Now, equality is a very difficult concept to define, and it requires dialogue. That's the first thing that it requires. And the position of women, and if you conflate this position of women with that of nature and that of culture, you see how logical thinking has completely overshadowed this aspect uh, of feminism, of femininity, of uh, this ecology. Uh, we can see the crisis today on, the, on those lines. We are very glad to have with us uh, this panel, uh, and we were discussing how difficult it has been, how tough it has been when she has to fight it out. And every time you see a wall, a white wall, and you want to disrupt it by putting on something, you have to consider many politics. You have to consider that this is a disruption, this is a deviation. A monocolored wall is peaceful. Anything imposed on it is an imposition. And you have to have the courage to do it. And uh, I'll now ask uh, Saurabhati to share her experiences and her thoughts on this. Hi, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, this is a very uh, interesting uh, thing to ask because as an interior designer, yes, I'm a, when I started in the year 1993, it was uh, the concept of, uh, you know, interior design, the concept of deep thinking with interior design was absent, you know. So we had to literally uh, go through the years to experience and bring forward forms of design in interiors. So it is very destructive, and uh, but it is, again, very, anything which has, uh, which is, Disruptive also probably is followed by uh, creation. So uh, when it is when it comes to interiors, it is I think walls are a very very important element of an interior. Or I should say, it is not about only interiors. When we talk about the city or public art, walls are a very important feature of the space because it speaks about characteristics. It portrays, you know, uh, uh, personalities. And uh, as an interior designer, when we approach an interior design or when we approach interiors, it is very important for us to sit with the clients, to understand them, to understand their psyche, and to portray the walls in a way that reflects their. Uh, you know, their personality and their, uh, you know, their, their, their uh, space, to reflect the space as uh, this, uh, the occupier's space, you know. So it is very, very important. And uh, I think this is a very healthy cultural exchange that we are having. Uh, I think the new town is developing pretty well, and uh, I am a little, I, I, I'm being a little, uh, you know, optimistic about it that you know, capital is seeing a little bit of changes 
uh, in forms of art where uh, I think uh, uh, all the electrical, you know, those uh, CAC boxes are being painted by, they are being taken up as projects by, you know, reputed advertising agencies and a lot of wall art is being done and uh, especially in Newtown, I guess, is developing as a very progressive, uh, you know, part of the city. And uh, exchanges like this, I think we have a very old connect with, uh, you know, a friend, Indo-French connect is very, very old, it goes from many years back. So I think it is, it is a very healthy exchange and I think we should have more of these exchanges as you were saying that, you know, it is important for you, the youth, to get prepared for the way forward and uh, create those walls of change which can energize us, which can, you know, bring us the new uh, genre. Thank you, thank you. And yes, this Imagine Futures is one of the workshops we did. And uh, it's true that uh, we can do, uh, we can have slogans about what is wrong with the place. We can also have a fascination for nostalgia about the past. And uh, but uh, are we designing the future? Like, what is the design of the future? What is it that we want? Uh, do we want the city to go on like this, or uh, do we want the noise, or do we want the pollution? Do we want this language that we speak? Is it uh... so? There are various things in the future that we are thinking. Prashwagati has been referring to New Town. It's a new Calcutta, but is it? Is it still Calcutta? It's difficult to say because Calcutta has a very definite uh, 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 feeling, ethos. And what is a new town is developing. It's a beautiful town and it has a lot of space for us, organized uh, us. And now uh, we will talk to somebody who is uh, very interesting because he has been a theater artist, is a theater artist, and is also a uh, graphic uh, artist, graphic artist who is. Uh, sort of approaching the past, but with his own interpretation of the past. And he is uh, bringing to life uh, various uh, characters and objects, which is intrinsic to our tradition. But it, it is opening up to the digital world, like the new town of art. So I will pass uh, the mic to now, or no, to share a few uh, words on this topic. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Firstly, I would like to thank Rina Mitroli uh, to bring me here and it's really an honor to be here with such esteemed people in this platform. I wish I was there actually listening to them. I would have been much happier because I'm a shy type of person in real life. Uh, and also I would like to congratulate and thanks to Skew for uh, doing this in this scorching heat of uh, Kolkata. Uh, and also, I love the topic walls of change, which has been given today. Uh, and after listening to Hiran Mito Sir, uh, really it uh, hits us hard that we should be aware of the things that should be done on the walls and what changes we are bringing actually. So it's our it's a duty of everyone, I think, all the artists, all the, all the eminent artists and also the government. I think they should work together to bring some positive changes rather than bringing some garbage on the walls of our city. So, uh, I think it's a enormous duty for us to, uh, to, re to reflect the society in a way that should bring some changes because I think uh, as Shubhendu uh, Das was also saying that uh, when we when when we go to a gallery or art gallery, it's very restricted. The art that is being exhibited there, only few people come across those art. Only people who love art, or maybe art student, or maybe art collector, only those people are going to the gallery. So if some artist is uh, voicing his protest in the form of art through canvases or anything, installations or sculpture, I think the number of people who are actually viewing that is very less but when it comes to a wall you can't you can't ignore every passerby every pedestrian everyone 
is going and he has to see the, or she has to see the art form. No one can ignore, even, an, even a layman who doesn't know anything about the art. So it's our duty uh, to make something on that wall which cannot be said as a garbage. So uh, it's a great responsibility to us. And uh, I mainly uh, work with uh, iconic figures and uh, I mainly love doing caricatures actually. Uh, I love to exaggerate the expressions of the people or the because I feel when I'm exaggerating a person uh, through my caricature, I am bringing the personality more, uh, uh, it's more distinct when I am doing the caricature work. Uh, the personality becomes more prominent in that way. So uh, that is, I, I, I am doing right now in digital platform, but in future I would love to collaborate with artists or myself. I will be, I love to uh, see my caricatures on the wall also. I have done in a uh, inside in, in in a personalized wall. I have done, but I would love to see caricatures being highlighted on the walls of Kolkata. Because recently, I I went to uh, I was participating in an exhibition in a pop up rather, and I was shocked to see that a young girl who is a professional who is working somewhere. She couldn't recognize Shatrujit Rai. Yeah, it was it was shocking. Uh, I was displaying a, sh a caricature of Shatrujit Rai, and uh, her boyfriend uh, was teasing that lady. Uh, Can you recognize her? And she was like, "Oh, it is Mukhya like that." And after that, uh, she told, "Oh, yeah, Heruda." So I was really, really shocked. I was really shocked that. Uh, I think she is. She might be 26 or 27. I really don't know exactly. But I was really shocked to hear that uh, someone cannot recognize a figure like Shukhitra and uh, says Peluda. So uh, when I saw Wallard, uh, I think it's in uh, Charu Market area. Yeah. So uh, I, I really liked that. And uh, after hearing this or after having this experience, I think. Icons should be brought to these walls because uh, suppose a child is going uh, on that way uh, to his school uh, with his parent and uh, and he asks his uh, mother or father who is uh, going with him uh, that uh, with him or her that uh, who is that person so I think it he, that child gets corrected very soon that. Uh, because uh, her mother or father can tell that, yeah, this is the person uh, who directed the film Bhubika and Bhagavan, which you have seen recently. So I think uh, if we can bring those changes and uh, from female icons to uh, any, any any icon that we are forgetting actually nowadays. Uh, so it's a duty of us, I think, to bring those people on and uh, glorify them on the walls of Kolkata or anywhere in the part, any, any part of India, I think. So that's a great responsibility we have, I think, so. Indeed, I mean, the responsibility for young artists uh, is immense because I think beyond that and everybody will agree because on your shoulders will lie a large burden of what the future would be in a world which is looking deeply uh, challenging. So uh, now I'll uh, turn to uh, Krishnendu sir, and uh, it's it's amazing that an institution uh, like NSHM is so supportive of uh, contemporary and performing arts. It's it's a space which is shrinking, and when you find uh, oasis like this, it's very heartening. And I like, uh, and it's also the nomenclature of NSHM, which is very interesting. And I learned that he had. Uh, lot to do with it and uh, I would just like ask uh, request him to share his thoughts about uh, what he thinks about uh, arts in general and how it affects uh, the school of students and uh, 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 what is his vision for the future for the youth. Thank you. Thank you. Now talking about walls of change and uh, hearing the bites from such uh, leading personalities Right, from the field of art. Now, when you talk about change, as rightly said by you, ma'am, that uh, uh, 
often it is very disruptive because people are unable to connect with the change and inherently we humans are resistant to change right so how we can have words which can signify a change issue now how many of you are aware about some general affairs general knowledge are you reading papers right now i'm not taking the name of that particular place but in delhi we are having this instances and in many cities where in two communities of different faiths you know they would come to fight right and a uh, lot of losses including human rights how can we now use the walls in those neighborhoods right where it can bring in certain messages and because of those messages you find suddenly these groups of people who are erstwhile fighting are having a kind of a notion based on certain imagined thoughts of the past not of the future would like to embrace the future and you can find them happily living together that can you can say a mark of protest by an artist or it is something like a will which is there inside us but somebody somewhere has volunteered has taken that onus to bring that will which is residing in everybody's heart and mind to put it on the walls what difference have you made probably significantly we have ensured that these communities are living in peace these communities are participating as a community when we talk about community projects or even public art projects or curated public art projects they are participants and then only we will be able to create a better tomorrow now in lighter way we are in bengal how many of you have heard the term hote we call it cow dung cakes in english cow dung cakes in english but in bengali or hindi we call it ghota and hote have you heard of have you seen hote yes sir how do you prepare it you require warm right yes. <laughs> And let me tell you, it's such an enterprising art. See, I mean, lighter way, because you are you are gaining revenue from that art, and you are also leaving certain signatures, certain impressions on the on the wall. Yes. So please let me tell you. I mean, Dada was talking about uh, rural, uh, remote places where uh, people are experimenting with with a lot of arts, you know, pickle arts. Uh, some something very elusive. It was then, and let me tell you, Asia and Africa is still there, and uh, we can use walls productively as well. So when we talk about murals, we are not talking about say when we talk about sustainability, it's not like the longevity of that particular art. But when I'm talking about a wall art, I'm seeing wall as a real estate, as a piece of real estate. and as a piece of real estate can we make it much more productive can we transform the street so called street artists into entrepreneurs street entrepreneurs right so take the example from kute or the kaudan ke and create something i mean right from the edge of humanity 40000 years back when people use the walls to signify certain changes at that point of time the human instinct was to survive survival was key and that showed in those paintings and the murals of hunting right human animals conflict slowly but surely we changed from from those kind of an wall arts in caves we invented You know, invented the writing, the calligraphy. So, what are those walls of change? So, to imagine the future, we have to go to the past and see to it that how we can identify those edges of civilization. 
and art, how it played a pivotal role in ushering that kind of a human imagination which is unbounded, unbounded. Creativity and imagination is the resulting end for civilization. And today, a lot of things are transforming to becoming physical to digital. So be it. We are not bringing again walls between physical and digital. Because that is where the imagination, the true imagination will come up. If we want to have our physical spaces to teach us, to guide us, to motivate us, to inspire us, to bring in that change, you have to bring in the artist in you to the forefront. It is not important that how geometrically correct you are, how sensitive are you to the colors, whether it is black or white. We can still bring in a lot of communication. And that is what the responsibility of human is to a fellow human. That to provoke, that to trigger that bit of change which can take the civilization from point A to point B and then to point C. But wherever you go, art is something like the soul. If that soul is lost, the body, the physicality doesn't have any, any kind of sustenance. If you want to sustain human life, you have to embrace art in true forms. You have to appreciate. And the way you can appreciate is to behave as a piece of art. The way we talk, the way we mingle, the way we combine with the society, that again is a form of art. We are the art in motion. We are the ones in emotion. Now, fantastic is here, and uh, shortly we will be having this inauguration of the mural. Which, uh, which is, you know, if, if uh, uh, me as a lay person from one particular corner, when I was visualizing this piece, I was seeing the geometry first, right? Marvelous. But then, you know, since our theme is empowerment and women in particular, and uh, this particular wall talks about Noti Vinodini, Vinodini Dasi, and Sara Benhar. And I was trying to figure it out that, hey, I also learned so much. I was not knowing about Sarah Benhar and how Sarah and uh, uh, Noti Binodini have so much of similarities. Both born in 19th century, right? And such an embodiment of empowerment, woman empowerment. Binodini Dashi, Dashi, you know, Kurdism. So it is very morally and socially uh, depressing, disadvantaged, right? At the age of 12, being a Buddhist, and by her early 20s, she dies from theater, from drama, from art. But within the short span of time, oh, Ben Johnson, be like the lily of the day. Even if you bloom and die that night, you are a plant of light. What if Noti Binodini uh, was active for a few years, right? But she created, she brought in the transformation on stage using European style with indigenous forms and creating brilliance. Even Ram Krishna Paramahamsa came from his temple to worship Noti Binodini on stage. That is the power of art. Similarly, sir, and both of them created those memoirs. She wrote Amar Gotha and Sarah wrote uh, My Double Life. And uh, in so many ways they were similar. And I'm, I'm so thankful to Skew and uh, the entire team that, you know, so marvelously you have, you have these two forms in that particular frame. You know, Noti Vinodini and Sarah Benhar. It, it looks like to me that probably they are, they are no more. But this is the wall of change. Because like me, most of you would like to know about Sarah Benhar. You know? and, uh, and then probably you figure it out, oh my God, what is woman empowerment? Right? Why in India we worship those goddesses? 
lot of answers to the superficial questions will come very rationally to you. And I truly believe that the world of change is here. And thanks to you. And thanks to all of you. And that is the community. And that is the community we should come forward and create those walls of change. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Krishna Yudha, the Tundasar talks about the revolution, I guess, so, which is good. And uh, I think that uh, it uh, is different from this brittle feeling of uh, utopia, that we are not seeking an utopia, but we are seeking some material changes, and uh, which transcends and uh, changes the material conditions of uh, the world. And, uh, and we, uh, we are embodiment of uh, various things we are. Uh, we are social, political, economical, various things. And uh, this artist brings out uh, a kind of an articulation of uh, what is possible beyond the reality. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I think that uh, now, since we have uh, heard from all the panelists, we can take questions from the audience and also we can, uh, the panelists can ask uh, questions to uh, each other if they like. So if somebody can kindly pass the microphone on to Kulada, who uh, has a question. Hello. I'm grateful that I'm here with this, uh, I can stand here, maybe. Uh, such a nice environment, and so many, so many uh, narration we have already heard. But I want to share another, another uh, narration. It's of, also of a wall. It's a sonic wall. Let me represent that, uh, that sonic uh, was, which we have to bring in the same thing because there is no gap. So, everything is told. Everything is told. So, I just conclude how, how, how I can uh, represent this sonic word here with this small time because we have a lot of other programs also. So, let me come out of the or make him go. That means, since we have a lot of people who are in the world, we have a lot of people who are in the world. And we have a lot of people who are in the So, there are many, many, many. And you, of course, today we will hear from you. So, Grimace, but for now, I give it. This is my work. I don't want to change it. I'm pretty. Give me a lot of money, but I don't want to change it. 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 I don't want to that's for fun. Just you uh, gave a hint of sonic wall, sir. Sonic walls. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That is Pradeep Chattopadhyay, the co-founder of one of the most iconic uh, rock bands in uh, the history of India. So, and he has been experimenting with this form of uh, new language, and uh, and which I recently found uh, in Canada, an artist called Christian Pop, who also has a similar practice. So, and uh, and and now, now, like, uh, uh, we'd like to hear from you. And uh, we don't want a silent audience, I think. Not after Pradeep Chatterjee's introduction. <laughs> you can also write Sony for that. <laughs> okay, so let's have some questions, please.
uh, from the library. Uh, my question is to Skio, as in like, uh, how, do you, uh, how did you first get the idea of combining these geometric shapes with the organic shapes, as in like with flesh? Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, how I have the idea to mix uh, organic flesh uh, with the, um, veins with uh, geometric? It's simple. Uh, one day I was, I was um, painting with a friend of mine, and uh, before this style, I was very uh, an illustrator uh, character on wall. And um, we have to do a background. And when we ask themselves uh, what can we do on background, I said, I asked myself, and I said, um, I realized that I don't know uh, how to do background. So I say, okay, now I have to do and I have to study how uh, I can express uh, something in the background. So this is uh, the first time I work only on geometric uh, stuff, shape. But for me, it's too, too, too cold, uh, only geometric. Uh, and uh, it's not too much. Uh, I love technical things. And uh, you are uh, participate to the geometric uh, shape to do the painting, so it's not very technical. Is uh, creativity is technical because you have to simplify to have a simple a basic uh, shape. But I need to challenge myself with a technical thing. And uh, I told you, I told me, uh, I asked me uh, what I I don't know. Uh, to paint now, and I never paint some realistic things. So I say, okay, now you take the two things you don't know, it's a geometric style and a realistic style, and you mix, and you try. And uh, maybe it's a memoir, maybe it's a mistake, but uh, in art, you have to uh, make mistakes. Mistakes is for me one of the way of the creativity, because you can't expect uh, to do a new thing uh, just in thinking. You have to um, try to retry to make mistake, and this mistake maybe is a good thing, and uh, it um, it's your personality, because. Uh, all people make mistakes, and for all of, the, of you, mistakes is bad thing. So, no, no, mistakes is very good thing. Uh, in mistakes, we can find a very, the, the sound of, the, of one thing, of the basic uh, thing of the creativity, of the new thing, and creativity in a new, new way. So, now you know. And uh, uh, do just a, a face, it was not very creative for me and no sense. So I want to speak about anonymous people in the street and uh, how uh, women uh, trouble are in the street and uh, all this thing. And I say, okay, uh, the soul, the identity is in the eye. I have to hide the eye because when you hide something, you make me, you make this uh, highlight. It's paradoxal, but uh, uh, when people come to me and speak about my art, they speak about the eye. There is no eye. <laughs> so uh, my goal is, is okay. Uh, I, um, so this is why I begin so, to do uh, geometric shape. And geometric shape are uh, inspired by architecture and the color too. So in India, I have a new um, nuance, nuance, nuance uh, of color inspired by uh, Indian 
clothes, uh, architecture, there's a lot of color in your life, in your city, in your country. And this has inspired me to create a new uh, nuance of color for here. So this is why. Thank you so much. Yeah, it reminds me, as you say, that mistake is welcome. So, you know, this Miles Davis, a very good uh, jazz musician, he was telling that when you uh, making a or putting a wrong note is not a problem. But important is that after that wrong note, wrong note, how you play the rest of the notes. Yeah, so it's, it's just similar. It's, it's similar. Uh, it's, it's similar. And when, uh, you know, in the graffiti, I start with illegal things. Illegal is very challenge yourself, uh, very, uh, when you are young, you want to, okay, to have an identity. And uh, after, uh, I uh, follow some great graffiti illegal uh, artists, and uh, we came to, on the train to Pens and to express ourselves. Uh, ourself, uh, ourself. Um, but there is a lot of rules in graffiti. Uh, I so I make a, a crew with other graffiti artists for quite the rules. So we have some um, exercise. Uh, we. We, we, okay. Um, yeah, uh, you know, we have a string on the like uh, on the wrist, yeah. And we used to bend, and someone uh, pulls the, the string to have a new way uh, of uh, the movement and. We have to improvise in this new way. So this is like uh, the same in uh, what you just told. So mistakes, and now you have to take the way of the mistakes to improve to be a new things. I have a request, not a question. I think what I said is it allowed? Yes, please. The request is that uh, I think uh, if all of you agree to me, the request is that uh, before we break from here and leave this room, now we have so many great minds and artists out here. I mean, just a stroke in that whiteboard on uh, which can be your signature and which can be there because this is getting transmitted live. Uh, so, whatever the mood is, the emotions are, and the thoughts. So you think those thought waves, how it has impacted you, it would be great if you can leave your impressions on the whiteboard before we end. Agree? Yes. Anybody from the audience can also join. Right? Great. But first, you have to start and then take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what, I'm always the this was not planned. I have a question, for, not for me, but for you. Uh, I am a 40 years old man, so you are the youngest, the new generation. So my generation was in my city. Uh, in my in France or in other country was to uh, have an identity uh, across the graffiti uh, with the graffiti to paint the world to know we are here we have the energy we trust in something it's uh, the graffiti to uh, uh, do a community so now I'm old I'm old you are young so you have the new generation. So my, my question is, what is your way to have your own identity, your own creativity? 
how do you want to express yourself? It's a question, it's not a response. So you have to, to, to give me some way. David, after your are the No, I think that's a great idea. That's a great idea. They should, they should, uh, like, Why don't you guys give them some clue, you know? So that, that impression will give them some figures. So that's, I think, you should leave. That is something which now we are part of. I think that there are very few pens. Very few pens, we can get more? Yes. I think that we can get more. We can just leave the chairs. We can get some more pens, please. More markers. Colors, one. Get some colors if you can. Ma'am, uh, from the press they want to take a picture of all the